You are listening to the Crazy Town Podcast interview shows number one with the hosts of the Sex Work BB podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this is uh, the first of our interview series episodes. It, uh, it's going to have our episode, I think this was on episode one and 1. 1.5 of season two. We interview the hosts of the Sex Work BB podcast. Kyra Kane and Shay Taylor, but one of them is no longer on the show. Yeah. It's just Kyra Kane now. So at, I think it's at the Sex Work BB Pod on Twitter. I think is their thing. I think so. it's still that, yeah. All right, so we're gonna get right into it. Enjoy the show, everybody. Let's go. Welcome to a special interview edition of the Crazy Town Podcast. My name is Jonas, I'm your host, and I'm here with TNT Dynamite, the explosive one, TNT D-I-N-O-M-I-G-H-T. That one sounded like it hurt. Yeah, it did. <laughs> You're like, oh, it sounded like T-I over there. <laughs> So anyways, this is our interview anthology. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you follow us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash crazy town media that's where our live season three podcasts are going to be put also youtube channel is under crazy town media make sure you subscribe and also follow us on twitter at crazy town media so this is our our interview with the sex work bb podcast host they are uh cam models and they do podcasts uh they were split across episodes one and 1.5 of season two but we put them all in one place it's going to be the full interview. It's probably, I don't know, 80 minutes or so. So we're going to get right into it, TNT. Let's go. Let's do it. Enjoy the interview, everybody. Where am I? All right, and we are back on the Crazy Town Podcast, and we have two very special guests, Shay Taylor and Kyra Kane from the Sex Work BB Podcast. Go ahead and say hello, guys. Hey, what's up, Kyra? The other okay. one is Shay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, do you want to um, tell everybody where they can find your podcast and all that stuff on the interwebs? Sure. You want me to do it, Shay, or you want to do it? Go for it. Here I go. You can tell she's really talkative. <laughs> um, so we are hosted by SoundCloud right now. Uh, it's Sex Work BB, so that's S-E-X. W-O-R-K-B-B um, dot com. You can also search for us on iTunes. You can find us with the same on Twitter. So it's at SexWorkBB. It's pretty universal what our name is. Um, we're very interactive. You'll find us. You will. Shay, did I yeah. miss something? No. We have I a Patreon? Yes. Uh, I think that's it. Okay. Good, good. Well, do you want to uh, tell everyone what you guys do for a living and kind of explain kind of what it is, a basic overview so for people who don't know? We just talked about this, and we were telling how it's like we need, like, a 30-second elevator speech, you know, but like, we okay. do so much that it's really hard to, like, narrow well, it in. I feel like instead of doing, like, a speech, what we tend to do is, like, bullet points, like, two cam models, clip makers, Amateur porn stars. We also started a podcast that's about sex work by sex workers who do yeah. sex work, work masturbation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I think that covers about all of it. I do, I mean, I do yeah. some of that myself. I don't know myself. what a cam model is, I guess. Um, it's kind of hard to explain It's because it's not just a strip couple online. Like, um, And there's so many different types of camming. Um, some people like Shay, she's a cam model that does a lot of private shows, and so she'll go one-on-one -on -one with a lot of people and do whatever. It could be anything probably from talking to doing something specific. And then I'm a cam model that has live shows where I have, like, a goal where it's like we have to have $100 and I'll take off my top. The goal is to get <laughs> naked. The goal is to masturbate. The goal is to have a party. So it's different for everything, but that's what we do. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, is there a reason that you choose to do the group show compared to doing private shows where you choose to do private shows other than group shows? Like, is there a different, like, meta? I think it really depends on the girl and just kind of what they 
I mean, it, it's a personality thing, you know, and, and not that I don't have a personality to do group shows and she doesn't have a personality to do private shows, but um, you just find kind of things that work for you in this industry. Um, yeah. Some girls do really, really well just making clips. They don't do shows at all. Um, and so I think we both kind of tried it all when we first started and you just find where you make more money, where you enjoy yourself more. See, it's I just started kind of, with my free cams and I just stayed there. Like I just yeah. stayed there until recently. Yeah. But so. she's tried the private shows and just didn't really like it, you know, and I've, <clears> I don't, <throat> and it's not that I don't like doing the group shows. It just, I don't make as much money and I, you see, that's I, how I feel. You know, I have to invest my time where I'm making money, so. Exactly. Well, I was just seeing this girl, and she, like, constantly is complaining about one of the sites we sell clips on that she's, like, never making money on this clip site. She's trying so hard, but then she's on another site, which is, like, kind of a girlfriend experience site called My Girl Fund, and she relishes there. Like, she yeah. has, it's so good for her, and it's, like, everybody finds. And sometimes you can, like, like, you can try, try, try. I mean, like, I would prefer to do group show. I mean, like. Kyra does that. That would be my preference because it's more of like a hangout party. I mean, people are paying you to, you know, take shots. Yeah. They're paying you Games, to, you know, yeah. Um, but I, it just, it doesn't work for me for some reason. And, you know, you can't really fight that necessarily. So. So you basically just have to find where you fit, where people enjoy you the most and kind of go from there and kind of make it work. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, it sometimes has to do with like, I, I can't really cam at night, um, and so I cam during the day, and I find, like, it seems like the girls that work nights do a little bit better because people are, you know, in the U.S. are around. Um, it just, and it's... Or late have, at night, a lot of people in the U.K., which is, like, the second most popular, probably, demographic for people, they're just waking up. It's, like, right before they go to work. Mm, yeah, so mm-hmm. I just wanted to add that. Well, yeah. yeah, I guess if you're camming during the day, people aren't doing shots and stuff like that for the most part. I mean, there are people doing shots, obviously, at 2 in the afternoon, but compared to 9 o'clock at night, there's a lot more people partying than yeah. 2 in the afternoon. Yeah, and you... And the and the the kind of camming that Kyra does, you have to be really really consistent. Um, and I am a single mom. I am going to school, you know, so it's really hard for me to be super super consistent. Like I can't be online at the same time every day um, to really build up that clientele, which it's it's harder for me that way. Well, and I was gonna say is like every time, like I'll be consistent and I'll go into a groove yeah. and I'll like be camming like four days a week, same time, same days, and then, like, something happens, and I just decide to skip one week, and then I ended up skipping two weeks. When you come back, you are starting over. Like, yeah. the people that are see you, they're still coming, and just because you're not there doesn't mean they're going to leave. They're going to find another girl to hang out with because you're not there, and then they yeah. might want to hang out with her for a while, and maybe they'll come visit you, but they're definitely not going to be there for you like they were. So it's almost a definitely, like, what have you done for me lately sort of, you know what I mean? Like, they forget about you and just move on to somebody else. Not, like, not in such brash terms, but, like, they're going to be there giving money and doing stuff regardless if you're there or not. Right, yeah. right. Right. Well, if they can't, they can't see you, they forget you. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Are you both on uh, my free camps, MFC? Um, um, we are both on there. I'm not really active on there. Um, I've like when we go to conventions and stuff, you can cam mm. from my free cams, and mm. so we do that. But um, I'm mostly on Streamate. Okay. What's the What's the difference between uh, say my free cams and and the other cam sites? Uh, I heard on your podcast that you refer to Chatterbait, which is a, another service stream service, as a remedial service, more of like for beginners. But what What makes it any different? Um, well, Chatterbait I... allows couples for one. Um, transgender they, boys they, mm-hmm, they're more open i think than my free cams to the the type of models that they accept mm-hmm. and it seems like there's the traffic is higher on chatterbait in my experience like i will have i would have sometimes a thousand people in there but only like maybe five of them are tipping mm-hmm. um so you feel like you're getting a lot more freeloaders than my well, free- and i, feel I mean like and the they're paper- on for I was just going to say, I feel like the pay for play there is cheaper too. Like on yeah. my free cams, it's like 200 bucks for me to go topless. But if I plan on going topless on Chatterbait, I'm going to have to make it like 75 bucks, 50 yeah. bucks, because they're not going to stick around for that. And they're like more inclined to like give you a yellow wall, which is like where they just tip you so much that the wall, like your chat room completely goes tips. 
they're more inclined to do like one token, one token, one token. Yeah. But on like MFG, okay. a lot of the time I'll get like people that are like fifty token, fifty token, fifty token, fifty yeah. token. So, oh, okay. so it's like comparing like a JC Pennies to like a high end clothing <laughs> store, like like in that kind of you know what I mean? Like well, I don't like to say that because. There are some girls on Chatterbait that do extremely well. Yeah. Some of the highest tips ever are on Chatterbait. Really? Yeah. Oh, so, and, true. and then they'll they'll go over to my three cams and try it and won't do well at all. Yeah. You know? So again, it's just finding what works for you and what but you enjoy. I was gonna say I think the reason we call it remedial though as well is because there's something called a cam score where okay. you get scored by how long you're on and how much money you make while you're on. And on my free cams, that determines your placement. So if you're not doing very well, you're on for eight hours and you only make 20 bucks, that's going to plummet your cam score. And uh, then on okay. Chatterbait, they don't have that. It's on room count to show you where you, like, land in the area. So, so I think so, that's why it's remedial. Like, you have to be prepared to make that money so your cam score can be up so you can – wouldn't you say, Shay? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the cam score on my free cams is daunting for a lot of a lot of girls. Um, you know, it's a balance to try to be online and work your time. And at the same time, you know, if you're not making tips, you know, to get offline. So that cam score doesn't like it, it messes with it. And then your placement goes way, way down. And then you, you're, I mean, at the bottom of 10,000 girls online, you know. Right, right. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm sure placement, like, especially on the My Free Camps, if you're at the very top of the page or you're 90 rows down, makes a huge difference of who, random people that pick your room. Right, right. Well, and I think that's why, I, I mean, on, on Streammate, like, I'm on, like, the third row, you know, so I think that's why I do better on there than My Free Camps. And so it, you just, you can't fight it, and you just have to go with what what's working for you, you know? Interesting, interesting. Uh, how long have, how long have each of you guys been doing cam modeling? Um... My November, yep, November, November. For, um, two years. I think we both started. Will be two years. We both kind of took a break. I came back and have been full time. Um, June was a year for me. So full time. Full time. That means uh, yep. no other no other employment. No other employment. Yeah. Wow, awesome. they're making good for money. You guys. They're banking Thanks. guys. Yeah, yeah. Good for you guys. I, <laughs> I mean, guess it depends on how hard you work. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Now, do you do either of you guys remember the exact moment you ever first considered being a cam model and like where that thought came from? We'll start with Shay. You know, I try to think back, and it's. I think it was a series of events. I had a boyfriend at the time that um, liked to challenge me a little bit. It was more of a dominant submissive relationship, even though I wasn't aware of it at the time. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Um, and he kind of um, was joking about it with me. And at the same time, I was looking for a house to buy. And my real estate agent, I've been friends with since we were in third grade. And he was joking about my home office. And I think like all of it kind of came together. N mind you, at the time, I had never masturbated before in my life. So I didn't even know. <laughs> I didn't even know like really what a cam girl was. And so I started doing some research. And when I do stuff like that, I become like almost obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. And then I, I was like, man, this is really awesome. These girls are really talented. So I think it was kind of a bunch of outside sources with my curiosity all at the same time, just like kind of clashed and I felt challenged. And so I hit broadcast <laughs> drunk, of course. When you say never in life, like I'm over like, 30 years, you never hit <laughs> masturbated ever. Right. Yeah. You... I was 32 years old. Um, and wow. that How friend. could you avoid it for that long? I don't understand. Um, he had sex a lot. <laughs> oh, okay. so I mean, it was unnecessary <laughs> for masturbate. Right. Well, well, I, guess it, I guess if you have sex that much, you don't need to masturbate, right? Uh, she always had a no. boyfriend. Um, no, I, I just, um, I was in a really, really bad marriage for a long time. And gotcha. so sex for me became this like, really like, uh, it was used, it was used to get me like, if he was being cranky, I was like, fuck, I better give it up so that he'll like gotcha. be okay for another month. So sex, sexual, like sex in general for me was just this like really awful thing. Um, so it never, I don't know what happened in my teen years. It makes sense though. I mean, I mean, that, that absolutely makes sense. I, I get yeah. it. What about yeah. you, Kyra? Do you remember the moment you thought about it or why it came about? Um, and I don't know if you guys have listened to this episode. For me, like, I remember growing up, like, I would watch cartoons, and I always wanted to be, like, the cartoon that had the huge boobs 
and like was overtly sexual and that she always interested me way more and um I remember when I was like in high school I was like man I would love to be in Playboy I would love to be like in a nude magazine and then I got older and I got married and um my marriage also sucked <laughs> and uh, um, I wasn't making good money so I was like how do you feel about me stripping? And so I was like, well, I can't strip as a full figured girl. So I started losing weight and then I ended up leaving him and I still wasn't making money. And so I was like, I'm going to try this out. I looked up ways to make money from home. This was the easiest. And I was like, I have no (laughs) problems being naked. So I tried it and it was just, here I am. That's like the most like straightforward story. Like, Legit, like that's just like you know what I wanted to work from home and make money, and this and this worked for me. I like being naked. Do you yep. ever have any uh, any cognitive dissonance, any feelings like uh, that that this isn't what you want to do? On your podcast, you always describe yourself as being proud of what you do, but mm-hmm. I, I'm sure at, at some point in your life you're like, you know, this this probably isn't what I want to do, or maybe I should try to find some different way. My whole life, I've been the type of person that I like start something and I quit. Like, my whole life, I've never been able to, like, zero in on what I feel like I'd want to do. My whole life, I wanted to act. I wanted to model. I wanted to sing. I wanted to do – I wanted to entertain people. And so me finding this is kind of like I don't know if I could be successful if I went to Hollywood. I don't know if I could be successful if I went to New York on Broadway. But I started doing this, and I'm decently successful. This is working for me. And, like, I think about the longevity of it, and I'm like, how long are we going to be able to do this? But since it's 2017 and social media, the Internet, um, cam girl, like, pornography, it's it's still Mm -hmm. new. So, like, 20 years from now, who knows what it's going to become, but it'll seem a lot more normal that I've been doing it. I'll just be a veteran cam model. Well, and, I mean, I'm – We've never spoke about this on our podcast, so this is going to be like new information for everybody. Dun, dun, dun. Um, um, I know Kyra's like, oh shit, what is she going to say? Um, <laughs> you do I already know there, her? You, you, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm, well, you don't know what I'm going to say, but, um, you get where we work camming maybe a couple hours a day and we make really good money. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we've talked amongst ourselves. I mean, we're, we're kind of spoiled at this point. Um, oh my God. Um, uh, and, and, I, you know, I mean, I think what I can go, I could go get a job doing something else. Like it's not that I can't, but what the money I would make and the time I would put into that compared to what we do now, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll make a hundred dollars in 10 minutes. You know, Literally absolutely. the other day, she's um, like, I have a Skype show, and it's for 10 minutes, and he gave me $100, but I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Do yeah. I want to do it? I want to reschedule. <laughs> and, like, for me, someone's like, I'll give you $200 for this hour-long custom video, and I'm like, um, well, let's try 450 Like, we're always, like, pushing it. You know what I mean? So it's, yeah. So right. to like go back out into the real mm-hmm. world, um, I mean, there's times that I think about it. I'm like, it would be much, it would be much easier. I could talk to people about what I do for my job. I could, you know, not have people be so skeptical about what the heck is she doing and in her house all day. Sucks. The stigma sucks, you know, and, and I feel like, I mean, cause I, I game, like I, I game on Twitch too. And sometimes I wish I could just be real with those people and be like, this is my name and this is where I live. Like everybody else is right, with each right, other. Right. Um, and I, I feel like I have to like then have this persona and hide myself just in case. I mean, there's mm-hmm. been a few of them, them that have found my porn. So like I, if I told them my name, then they would know, you know? So there's some times where I think it would be much, much easier, but at the same time, I'm going back to school. I have time to totally focus on my degree. I have kids. I have time to focus on them. And we, you know, so yes, sometimes it seems easier, but I, I, to make that transition from camming to real world, like work, I don't, it would be a struggle. It would be a real struggle. Oh, oh, absolutely. And you made another point about how, how all this is just coming to be real huge right now. Same thing with podcasting though. So you, your yeah. podcast could take off yeah. too and you will have been doing a 20 years of podcasting and then all mm-hmm. of a sudden, you know, you're already in the game. That's kind of how I feel about like we're getting into it early. It's kind of small, but in 10 years when it's giant, we'll yeah. be, abdu- we'll have been doing it for 10 years at that point. You know what I mean? So it's, right. you know, you're ahead of the game. Now, with, with, with the same question he kind of asked you, do you guys have an ex- exit strategy? Like, are you doing this until a certain age or to a certain financial goal or, uh, 
or you know any sort of, or you tell your kids are so old or you know a million dollars a million dollars yeah um i mean i'm i'm about a I'm about Try a 20. Year. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're spoiled, remember? I ha- I'm about a year away from getting my uh, my bachelor's in accounting. Um, so I will be making – yeah, yay. Um, I'll be making a trans- transition over to be a CPA. Okay. Um, but there, I probably will stay in the sex work industry. Um, I have several cam models that um, have came to me and asked me if – I will be their CPA once the once I'm done. There's a need for it. Um, oh, awesome! A certified public accountant, so doing taxes and things like that for them, and having a cam girl that kind of understands how it works, and and being able to, I mean, because we we can write off dildos, we can write off underwear, you know, makeup, <laughs> yeah, oh, maybe makeup. hair done, getting your nails done, your room, your internet. Well, how many so, sex work accountants are there? You know what no, I mean? Like, I don't exactly. Know of any. Right. Well, I mean, there's this thing called the Cupcake Girls Organization, and they um, help out cam models in need and stuff like that. And I'm sure if somebody came to them, they could find somebody. But in a couple years, it'll be Shay that they right. And and imagine, I mean, if you're the only one, I mean, I'm sure those people will get the word of it eventually. They'll try to copy or whatever. But you'll be the only one. So you could have hundreds or thousands of girls coming to you saying, "Hey, will you help me figure out how to save money on my taxes?" Blah blah blah. That's great. That's a whole different genre. You know, and I think there's a, a lack of trust amongst people in the in the sex work industry just because we have to be so careful. You know, girls mm-hmm. um, are backstabbed and they're outed by fellow girls and things like that. So to have a cam girl that you know, I mean, because you're you're giving these people a lot of information. You're giving them your real name. You're giving them your social. address. You know, everything. So mm-hmm. to have somebody that you know and is is a fellow sex worker that isn't going to have a stigma with it is is super cool. So. I think that's a great idea. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. good for you. That's awesome. See, All she's right, like well. ultra prepared. Okay, so uh, I'm have like. Have you decided uh, to go to school yet? Uh, if she I went talks to school, about it a lot. I know. I know. I, I'm the aware. If I've I went to school, it would be 16 years worth of school. I'd want to be a sex therapist. Um, I I <laughs> love that kind of stuff. And then if I didn't, I'd go for two years and be a sonographer. You know what I mean? Like, and do ultrasounds, which still involve the vagina. So right. it's like either way, <laughs> but I love the sex work industry and um, I'm really proud to be a sex worker and I'm as proud as I can be without putting my family in jeopardy. Right. Um, right. But when I think about it, I'm like, their options are so unlimited. Like I could start writing books. I could try to force this podcast to become something um, a little bit more tangible money wise. I could become a producer. I could become an affiliate marketer. There's like so many different things that I could try to do. Mm-hmm. I just, I haven't decided. I have no clue what I'm going to do. I'd love for this podcast to end up being something real, like something that is a staple in the sex work community that people go to because they know we're there for them. Um, but I also love doing what I do. I like right. making clips. I like doing all that stuff. And I think 10 years from now, I'll just start doing more mom fetish stuff. So it's like. Well, that makes sense. So you don't have an exit strategy per se. You're going to just kind of let it naturally evolve into whatever. Look, I've seen 60-year-old women making bank yeah. on these campsites, man. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're out there. I mean, I don't watch them. I'm not into that kind of stuff. Uh, oh, <laughs> hey, 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 we don't judge Good you. Day. But I, I want to touch – you guys mentioned on uh, – I think you said Chatterbait. There's a male – there's transgender and male. Is there – like, I mean, I don't really even think of male cam models per se. Is that a big industry? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they attract – I think it's getting bigger. They attract a lot of gay males, mostly, oh, yeah, not that females. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I was just curious because I wouldn't think that females would go watch a guy on cam. They could, I mean, they could go to some random chat site and find some dude willing to whip his dick out. You know what I mean? Without yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, started, Jonas, you want to get into the penis. business. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah there we well, go. Well, to be honest, too, females, I feel like <laughs> when we want to masturbate, we know what we want to see, and usually, like, for me, I want to see, like, girl, girl, oiling, new roo, like, big tit play, something like that. And, like, I don't want to, like, search, like, big dong swinging. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, like, for women that, like, yeah. it's the difference between men searching big tits and girls searching big cock. Right. Like, right. we might watch it sometimes, 
Well, right. we um we get paid to watch guys masturbate, right. so right. it's not necessarily right. the thing that we run to like be like, can you do that for me for free? Yeah, <laughs> and you're like, hell yeah, I will. Hell but yeah, it, I'll watch. But it. it it's hard because it does it desensitizes you. I mean, real talk, you know, oh, like absolutely. you like definitely porn to me is not what it ever once was, and doesn't do half for me what it once does, you know, yeah. or did. So. Well, to right, give our right. listeners some insight onto what the hell a dick rating is and yeah. how this works. Oh, I yeah. am not the person to ask this ever <laughs> question. I am not the person to ask. Nobody wants me to see their cock ever, and I'm so upset about it. <laughs> Shay, what's a dick rating? How does so, this work? You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta tell me. And well, she's serious about them, too. I know. <laughs> So let's see about this. She's, She's like, got like I know a 10 I point J scale. She writes different patients on each one. Trust me, you don't want to be on the curve. You got a dick, you got a dick rating, didn't you? Um, <laughs> oh, I know. Listen to your podcast. I do it. Um, so they, I do them for five minutes, so they're topless, and I rate their dick. So uh, records yourself topless. Yep, records myself topless video. Um, I do three different kinds of dick ratings. One, I will just tell you, like, like I'll give it a rating one to five. The second one, I will give you a rating one to five and tell you why I gave those ratings. And then the third one, and they're more expensive. Um, is a video of me topless giving you a rating. And I usually tell them like what I think about the, the head, the balls, the overall appearance. Um, yeah. Um, and what's the, the going rate for these? Um, I want to say it's like, I think it's sixteen ninety nine for the highest, uh, something like that. I, I so think someone I, I pays you $17 to look at their penis and tell them what you think about it. Yes. Yes, and they thoroughly enjoy them and often yeah. come back and buy more stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm, like, I'm super curvy. I'm, like, super, like, I'm kind of goofy, and I and I get commented a lot on, like, the personality that I bring into the dick rating. And so that's – I've, I've had some guys buy dick ratings, like, three or four times. Like, I, I don't know what you want me to say differently the third or fourth time I rate it. But, <laughs> well, it doesn't um, really change, like, over the so years that angle. much. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. So I think they just like my the personality that you put into it. Maybe what, you have no what personality does the guy type. Get out of it? <laughs> You'll have to ask them. I don't um, know. I feel like some guys, they have, like, because I think... I think some guys just want you to tell them that you like it. Um, and then I think there's the opposite of it. There's, yeah. I mean, I've had guys buy dick ratings and then they'll just like, they e- want you to make fun of them. They'll email me and say, um, I want this to be like small penis humiliation dick rating. And I'm like, Which no, cost extra. No, I bought, you <laughs> bought, an, you what bought, an, on? you bought an honest dick rating. So I'm going to be honest with you. If you want me to humiliate you in a video, you need to pay me $50. So. Right. Mm. Exactly. Wow, that's I have to crazy. pay you to talk bad about my dick. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. Dude, um, I'm all about it. Domination, humili- That's huge. Humiliation yeah, huge. is huge. That's so huge. crazy. Oh my god, that's awesome. Unlike I their mean- dicks. Boom. Oh, come girl. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's awesome. That's so crazy. So, obviously, getting into this kind of work, I mean, there's obviously, when you go into it, you assume certain people in your life are going to be accepting and certain people may not be so accepting. Yep. Um, It's going to be a two-part question. Was there anyone who you thought would be accepting that actually wasn't and vice versa? Um, I've only told probably a handful of people. Um, So... Not many people ha- – I've given the opportunity to really be judgmental gotcha. about it. Gotcha. Um, I do have – there's a few people that in my gaming community do know, and they were really hesitant at first. They were like, uh, well, what – you know, like, what What do you – what's this mean, you know? And I'm like, gosh, like, you think badly of me, you know, was my first, like, mm-hmm. reaction. Right. Um, and the more that they get to know me, they see I'm an awesome mom, I'm a great person, I'm a good friend, you know, and they've become, like, it's not even, we don't even talk about it, you know, it's just kind of, it is what it is. But I will, I will say that a majority of the people, they, they kind of talk bad about the girls that go on like Twitch and stuff and, and use their boobs and stuff to gain mm-hmm. followers. So I oh, think, yeah, absolutely. 
And so I think that they kind of put me in the same category as them and then learned that that is not the case. And so it's just like, whatever, she's going to do whatever she's going to do. And that's fine. But um, I, yeah, I haven't really given the opportunity to many people to like, not, I mean, my, nobody in my family knows at all. And as big a social as the internet is, you, you would think at some point it would, you know what I mean? Like somebody would stumble upon it. Someone would tell some, you know, or something, you yeah. know, so that's awesome. Uh, wow. Yeah. I mean, that's a fear of our, I, I got put on, well, actually I, the boyfriend I, I talk about, um, found me on Pornhub, messaged me and said, I found your video on there. And so I quickly messaged them. It was one of my shows that had been recorded and uploaded. And so, yeah, it freaks you out a little bit because I mean, he found it very quickly. Um, and like, wasn't, I mean, it didn't have my name or anything on it. So you, you just, you never know. It is a fear that we live every day, you know, right. especially, um, you know, being, yeah. Being moms and having exes and, you know, like it, it, it gets scary. It, I mean, I real talk, it's, it's scary. We live in fear of it every day, you know, um, right. it, and it's, it's unfortunate. And that's kind of why we oh, do the podcast, hoping that those stigmas will open up and people will be more accepting and realize that what we're doing is legal and it's totally safe. And mm-hmm. we, I mean, we've helped a lot of guys, you know, just through processes and being friends and yeah, and, and it, it blows it blows my mind too because me and me and TNT are very progressive people. Like, I don't give a shit what you as long as you're a good person. I don't give a fuck what you do for a living, how you whatever whatever. But it's so crazy that some people are so judgmental and so like just crazy about like, oh, you do that, you must be a terrible person. Like, they can't even give you a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. Saying that is like. We live in America, and unfortunately, right. America is kind of a piece of shit right now. And yeah. so not only are people, like, prejudiced about women, prejudiced about people of color, prejudiced about being gay, prejudiced about being transgender, prejudiced because you prefer ketchup over mustard. Like, it doesn't matter. People in this world, and especially in America, they want to have their opinion, they want to be right, and they don't want to be nice about it. And, like, right. for the way I feel about it, and Shay and I, like, we don't agree on everything. And I'm okay with that because we're both good people, and it's okay to have differences. It's okay to not be the same as everybody else because, to me, that world seems so bland. Like, Absolutely. even if it was all sex workers, I'd be like, well, fuck, we need a non-sex worker in here. <laughs> right, you right, know what right. I mean? So it's just – it sucks. I don't get it either, and I've been this way my whole life. I've been so – I was raised to be really open and Me too. sincere. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, the more boobs out there in the world, the better. <laughs> See, that's <laughs> right? how so everybody think, should feel. I think that you're doing the world a service, honestly. <laughs> Absolutely. And what about you, uh, Kyra? Did Did you have anyone that surprised you? Like, um, I thought you mentioned. Did you find? Did you mention the podcast? Your family found out. Uh, no, I told my family. Uh. Oh, you told your family. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was um, raised by my aunt and uncle, and um. I told them, I told my aunt first, I'm closer to her, and I was like, listen, I'm um, a cam model, and she asked what that was, and I explained it to her, and she wasn't really about it, and then I told my cousin, and she wasn't really about it, but they weren't going to tell me what to do, I'm an adult, right. um, but unfortunately, I do feel like money runs the world, and when they found out that I was making as much money as I was, that I was able to support my family while staying home, while being on the PTA, while doing all this stuff, it kind of changes the way people feel. And mm-hmm. so they're like, oh, money? Well, then why didn't you say so? That's a horse with a different color. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but I haven't so once had- they found out how much money you could make doing it, they're like, good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I haven't – I don't know a lot of people. And, I mean, everybody I know, like – if I can be honest, and this is going to sound fucking awful, I think I'm so pretty. I think I'm really pretty. And I know I'm a bigger girl, and I'm okay with that because I like me. Me too. And I think I ooze confidence. <laughs> and so, like, I think that's okay. And I think when people meet me, like, I I get told, like, when I'm walking in the mall, and someone's like, oh, my gosh, you are so pretty. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I know. Like, thank you. Oh my gosh. See, because I'm I'm the total opposite. I'm like, whatever, stop. Like I'm just I dress really fancy all the time. I dress like I'm going to a fancy dinner. Like I'm always wearing skirts and dresses. But so I'm proud of being like, hey, I look nice. I don't look like um this and this and this, but I drink a lot and I get (laughs) naked online. 
You know what I mean? See, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, you're just, I mean, you're like, this is me, like me or don't. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's, Kyra, sorry if I sound like an asshole thing. Oh, not at all. Uh, oh, I, I, do. We, we, I tell we her support she, that. We, Kyra, we think as, we have a really big dick. That's yeah, we do. They do. They say that all the time. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> As, yeah. as an African American model, Kyra, how do you how do you differentiate? I'm not African American. Wait, you're not. No. You don't have any any black in you. I'm a little bit Panamanian. Well. Why do you we, think I'm African American? If you don't have any black in you, I was going to ask if you would like some. Um, <laughs> Oh, look at, look at, I've been holding on to that joke for four weeks. <laughs> Listen, and in my head, too, I'm like, I'm literally like the most alabaster person in the world. Guys, I, I did not know that was coming, up. and I thought it the same exact thing. Up. I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? I was Son of a bitch. I was set up. To figure out how well, you know what? I got a lot of shit because on a, on a prior podcast that we did, I, I admitted to liking uh the bbws and and some of the pornography that i watched and damn it i don't care you're beautiful shay shay you're beautiful too i've looked up both of your works uh (laughs) i want to do a quick plug here of some of your videos that i i found especially Uh, oh my goodness (laughs) this is okay for me to read i'm so fucking curious about my videos too so i think it's really interesting too all right uh ira has uh won the wake up and fuck me pov highly suggestible uh (laughs) (laughs) full nude masturbation another classic it is a classic he's not joking that one i am (laughs) i am blushing (laughs) (laughs) my face Oh my and, god. Oh, oh my god. gosh, Shay Taylor, your is it, oh, let me find a name. It's the it, oh, twerk impregnation. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh, training camp impregnation and oh blackmail. You deserve a lot of applause. Listen, both those videos are top sellers of mine that he mentioned. My POVs are super popular. That's why I That's do awesome. so many. My POVs are so popular. Yeah. Oh, I do a lot I do I do a lot of twerking. I probably really? Yeah, probably sixty yeah. percent of my videos are twerking. Oh requests. my god, that's awesome! That's are they? Are they? Is that your request. top seller? Your best feature? Um, no, I do probably my mommy videos are my top sellers. Um, I do really? a lot of mommy videos and a lot of yeah, either mommy or booty. It's it's all huh. it's one or the other. Yeah, and I'm boobies or eating. <laughs> really, like you pay me to eat. Yeah. Yeah, nope. someone showed me, yeah, the people that have videos where people just sit there and eat, like, pizza and hot dogs and whatever. I don't like just, pizza. But, I don't but, like pizza. Wait, 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 a, wait a second. Wait a second. Did you just say you don't like pizza? I do not like pizza. At all? Ever? Uh, I like some pizzas. I don't like red sauce. Like, I don't like tomatoes. Oh, okay. And so, like, I like a barbecue Hawaiian pizza. That's all right. Um, Papa John's had this cheeseburger pizza, and it had, like, this mayonnaise something sauce oh, on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I was like, that's delicious. Um, so there's, okay, well, while we're on this topic, while, 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 while we're on this topic, on a previous episode of our podcast, we had, me and TNT and our our other co-host, Chachmar, had a conversation. If you could only eat one two-topping pizza for the rest of your life, that's the only pizza you could order forever, what pizza would it be? Ham and pineapple. And my, me too. I'm probably going to get hazed for liking pineapple no, on my pizza because no, I do all the time. Pineapple on pizza. So if you're like pineapple. not allowing me to do ham and pineapple, I would say double mushrooms. <laughs> no mushroom. shit. Are you kidding? That is 100% T- TNT's fucking answer was double mushroom. 100% yeah. honesty. I love mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> High five, TNT. Here. Now he's like extra in love with me. Yeah. He's like, not only is she BBW, but she likes my pizza. <laughs> <laughs> If she liked pizza, she'd like yeah, my pizza. Right, right. <laughs> I, uh, don't have to my, eat pizza. Mine was double bacon, and they, I got made fun of for that, too. too just I bacon on pizza. Is, but I don't like, I think it makes the pizza too greasy. I do not like bacon on a pizza. Oh, uh, huh. Well, I can, I can respect that. Absolutely. Yeah. Sorry, that's a totally random question, but it was yeah. something that I wanted to ask you guys anyway. So it came up, so it, was, it figured out it was perfect. I'm yeah. really surprised you guys could do this for this long, and you don't think men are like the scum of the earth, though. I'm sure you run into I, some really disrespectful, some I real am assholes. I'm so rare on that disrespectful scale. I never, yeah. I rarely get trolled. I okay. don't have guys that disrespect me. I and if I do, it's like far and few between. I don't have people sending me random dick pics. It's really weird. 
Like, my life is so weird compared to other girls. I don't know why. I think it's because I just, looking at me, I feel like I, I maybe look like I don't put up with shit. Like, I'm going to be like, well, go fuck yourself. How about that? Well, yeah, that you would think that, like, I, to be completely honest, I would think that cam models would get a ton of unsolicited dick pics. Like, oh, they because, do. There are Twitter yeah. accounts that are just, their profile picture is a penis picture. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're going to get automatically blocked. And if you're not getting automatically locked, that means that model is hurting. That model need, thinks she's going to try to convert you into a payer. She's, like, token hungry, money hungry, not doing very well. So if she's entertaining you, know that either her shit's not that great or her game's not that great. Because she's, wouldn't you say, like, if you see somebody with a profile and their picture is their dick, what do you do, Shay? Block them. Boom. Yep. Right. Yeah, right. I have to so, say, I probably do the same thing. Right. So you have to, like, almost preempt, preemptive strike it before it even becomes a problem because you know that their intentions are bad. Yeah. 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 The Crazy Town Podcast. And we are back on the Crazy Town Podcast with the hosts of the Sex Work BB Podcast, Kyra Kane and Shay Taylor. Welcome back, guys. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. So I want to ask you guys, um, you know, being being a, a, a sex worker or a cam model, obviously you guys do this from a studio or your home or wherever. But, you know, there is the danger of, you know, stalkers and, you know, that kind of stuff. Because of what you do, people get crazy about people who get naked. It's just, I mean, it's just what happens. So, I mean, have you had any situations that made you feel really unsafe, or have you had a real stalker or anything like that that's been a real negative experience with this? Um, I think, and she might be the same thing. My biggest issue is, like, and I'm super upfront with people, very upfront. Like, I had somebody message me the other day, and they're like, I'd really like to get to know you. And I was like, well, cars on the table, we'll never meet. I'm cool with getting to know you. I have friends that I've known for years, and the only way we'd meet is if you stopped by at a sex convention and wanted to take a picture, do, like, a small meet and greet, and then you go on your way and I go on my way. And he's like, that's really closed-minded of you. And I'm like, this is my job, friend. Like, this is what I do. And that's probably – and the biggest issue is, like, talking to somebody a lot, and then they grow feelings. Mm-hmm. And get really attached and are okay with the fact that it's only going to be virtual. And right. that's, and so they're like, for me, I have a P.O. box that is not where I live. Right. So I like drive to a P.O. box. I'm so, I think she, I don't know. Well, you I don't notice on the podcast, you don't even say what state you're in. You just say Midwest. You know what I mean? So it's state? like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's even more vague than, mm-hmm. you know, than a whole state. Because what's the Midwest, right? Right. 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 You know, mid- yeah. 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 There's a lot of different states in the Midwest. And people so. like to guess because people say I have like an accent. A lot of people guess that I'm from like Minnesota or Wisconsin. Yeah. So I won't say. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I, I totally get, I totally get it. It only makes you safer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, we, I'm sure one I mean, day it's going to be. Well, and, like, Kyra and I are, like, I mean, we're best friends. You know, we talk every day, and we just learned each other's real names, like, not that long ago. And it was kind so, of an accident that we. Yeah. That you accidentally yeah, stumbled just, upon each other. Right, right. That's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah that's awesome, um, though. I haven't had a stalker. I had a guy when I very, very first started camming that was really, really pushy and, like, would not take no for an answer and was really kind of creepy. I was like, he could be dangerous. And I ended up, like, stopping camming and changing my cam name. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I I lost him, luckily. I think I more deal with – I do a lot of, like, girlfriend experience. And so – I end up with a lot of guys who get really, really attached. I was going to say that sounds like that would be dangerous because it almost promotes those sort of feelings to those guys, even though it's fake. That's what they want you to do. They want you to promote those feelings. Well, right. Yeah, Yeah, I get get that part. Yeah, so I would think they would fall um, easier for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, and they do. You know, like I I just lost – I mean, there's been a guy that's um, support – he was the one that supported our podcast – we, you know, he was like, I finally had this realization that like, we won't ever be together. And I was like, uh, like, uh, what, uh, y- y- like, I don't even know what you look like, dude. You know, like, <laughs> what are you talking about? And so like, it, it just, it, it, it's mostly that where they're just like, mm-hmm. and they're not, they don't get it, you know? Um, and 
when you tell them like genuinely like we're friends like I care about you you know like I I want well for you but I don't want to marry you Mm -hmm. you know and and being that I'm single I think that it probably promotes that even more because you know sometimes I'm like if I was married they would get it you Mm -hmm. know or at least hopefully get it but being that I'm single it's like but then but then on the other side if you tell people that you're married or you have somebody popular you're not going to get those clients because they're looking for a girl who I but you'll get other it. clients that like the cuck stuff, and they like thinking that like they're the other guy yeah, in right. your yeah. relationship uh, in your marriage. Word. Yeah. yeah. Word. <laughs> well, yeah. And I also, date at all? Do we date? Mm-hmm. I date. It's difficult. It's difficult. I live in a small town, and at what point do you tell your date you're a cam model? Right. Right. I tell them up front. Well, okay, I but, that's the best way then, to do it, probably. Okay, but then if you don't work out, then what? Dude knows you're a cam model, and he's going to tell who. You know, like you live in a small town. Right. He's like, he's like, oh man. He's like, I'll just have to pay now. (laughs) He's like, I never got it in. I never (laughs) got it in, but I'm gonna get it. Right. Right. Do you tell them your real name when you when you date them? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I don't know any of these people from online, and I don't date a ton of people. I have like one or two people that I date like exclusively, and I I let them know that my job is kind of my boyfriend too like right. i work a lot these guys are kind of like a part of my life right um what i do and now the podcast is a whole other branch of my boyfriendness and that takes a lot of time yeah. so does this industry working like this and dealing with like people you know because you deal with a lot of people who have true feelings for you even though you don't reciprocate does it make having an intimate relationship with someone hard uh, outside of canning um Sometimes. I mean, I've had it where, like I said, it, you kind of become desensitized to it a bit. You know, it's uh, it's kind of a whole other experience having somebody actually here for you. But I, I deal with a lot of, like, insecurities that, like, they're worried about my job. Right. That makes sense. Like, where I put that onto them, and and it's just my own fears that, like, they hate what I do, even though they're like, no, I'm fine with it, you know? But you're like, how do you how do you not have an issue with it? Like, I get naked for, like, thousands of men, you know? Like, <laughs> that's your girl. But I, like, am so – I have an issue with um, jealousy. Like, I'm not a jealous person. Yeah, me neither at all. Like, you, at all. I, and I'm decently flirtatious in general. Like, I could be at – mcdonald's ordering my burger and i'm still going to be extremely friendly and i'll joke around with them and like that's just who i am and so i think it'd be really hypocritical of me like if i was dating somebody and like they're flirtatious and i'm like well fuck this shit like (laughs) it just so for me if somebody is jealous of like me doing my job it's just not gonna work but you know you would think for a guy to be comfortable with dating someone who's in the sex work industry they would have to um, either well, either you would think they either have like an ill intention of some sort, or like they're just they're, they have to be pretty open and decent, you know, like progressive minded people because they know you're doing this. You know, what I mean, they have to be okay with. Well, uh, we're gonna hang out this afternoon, then after that, she's gonna go home and get online. There's gonna be a thousand guys throwing money at her to do whatever. Fuck that. He didn't even leave while she can't. He took oh, a nap man. while she can't. He's watching TV in the living room while she can't. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> right. So, you know, so, I mean, it's just a whole different, I mean, you, but, I mean, like, that experience doesn't fit a lot of guys. You know, a lot of guys would not be able to do that or would not be able to have jealousy or be mad about it or whatever. But, like you said, that's your income, man. Like, who, who are you going to choose? Your job, which you make tons of money, or some dude. You know what I mean? Like, obviously. Right. Right. And I feel like I've become a whole lot more open-minded, and so – like I don't somebody who's not going to be open minded about it is not really somebody that I want to be with anyways. So it makes sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. So has has this job helped you grow as a person at all? And, and if so, in what way? Yeah, it's challenged my thinking a lot. Um, I, I was very religious. Um, I worked for a church, very close minded. Um, and so it's challenged me and this podcast has, I mean, my friendship with Kyra every, like, like she said, we don't agree on everything and Mm -hmm. we challenge each other. Like, well, what the heck? Why are like, that's this, this is how I feel about it. And it's like, Oh, like you're, you're right. You know? And so it has, it's helped me with, I'm super shy, super shy. Don't, I don't like people. I don't like talking to people. Um, and so it's, it's it's helped. It's the crux of what you do, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 
All right. Yeah. And, and I, so it's helped me in person to do it because okay. it's fine. Like, I feel like I have like the computer to hide behind. That makes um, sense. Most cam girls are very anxious, antisocial people, believe it or not. Oh. Well, that makes sense because you have almost, it's like the, the video camera or the cam is almost like a wall. You know what I mean? Like it's your own wall to, like they're out there. They're not here. But they're then if you go out public, the you're like, oh my God, mm-hmm. like there's so many people. What's going on? I'm anxious, yeah. whatever. I guess I can see that. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. What about what about you, uh, Kara? Um, I feel like I've grown a lot, and it's more. Um, when I got out of my marriage, it was decently abusive, um, physically and mentally, and so like I came out of it, and I had PTSD pretty bad. So like relationships were really hard for me. Um, just having friends was really hard for me because I wasn't allowed to have friends when I was married. I wasn't allowed to have things of my own. I wasn't myself anymore, and so um. When I got out of it, I started serving, and I, like, joked around with people, and I got to know people, and people really affirmed that I was a good person, and they affirmed that I was funny, and um, or I was pretty, and all this stuff, and it kind of, then I started to cam, and, like, it was even more affirmation, like, people like me for my personality, mm-hmm. more so than my look sometimes, and that, like, it made me confident with who I am, and it helped my anxiety that I'm my own person now. Like I feel like myself for the first time in seven years and I feel Mm -hmm. like nobody can control that and nobody can make me be somebody I'm not. And then like I meet Shay and honestly like doing this podcast and getting to know Shay, like it helps having somebody there that completely understands what you're going through Mm -hmm. on good days and on bad days and not even just through like camming like in real life stuff like I can shoot the shit with her about my kids you know what I mean because I trust her and that's some because this we say it on the podcast that this job can be very lonely I was gonna say lonely yeah that yeah. was the word and, I was and, gonna and, use and, and it's like as as much as you have a, a bunch of people watching you talking to you I can see how it would be lonely because on the other end of the camera you're by yourself you're you know what I mean and like you said it's competitive girls are catty they're ruthless they're backstabbing you know what I mean like they all want to get up be the next top model you know that you know so to speak you know so I could see that happening absolutely well and it's unfortunate because like and we say this on the podcast too if we work together like because I know like a handful of top models that they're like be a top model come after me like, come get me. And they're not being mean about it. They're like, they want you to be successful. They want you to mm-hmm. bust your ass so hard that you try to catch them. And then there are other models that are kind of like bitches, and they're really rude. And, like, I think one reason that we're doing this podcast is because we don't want – like, those girls suck. Mm-hmm. You don't need to be friends with those girls. And, like, even though you're lonely, there's a hundred other girls that aren't like that. And that when you say, I want to film three videos tomorrow, that they're going to message you and be like, what's going on with those videos? Mm-hmm. How many videos did you do? Like they're pushing you to kind of be the best right. verse. I think when you start in this industry, you almost are like you're looking for a mentor. Right. Um, you're looking for because there's no like how to guide on mm-hmm. how to be a cam girl. There, I mean, you can like there's a few there's um some YouTube uh, videos, some yeah, blogs. Miss Lollipop, she does a great um blog. Uh, Gosh, what is her? Why am I Cam Model Express? I know she has a bunch of it's stuff like a out. Like old builder and a little yeah. Help tip. Um, Cam Girl Cuties is out there, but it's for the most yeah, part like forum. Yeah, um, you can't like you're you just don't know where to start. Um, and so I remember look like looking at some of the top models and being in awe of them, and then meeting them at the convention and finding out that they were like the most shallow, bitchiest, awful people in the entire earth. And and you hear that from a lot of girls where they like mm-hmm. have this like aha moment of like this girl that they like idolized in the industry, and then she ends up being this terrible person that really wants them to like quit. You you become really deflated. Um, Mm -hmm. and so for us to like, kind of give, to be those mentors to girls and, and be true and be honest and be real that we're like really here to help. Like if you need something, shout out, like call her at sex work, baby, we're, we're going to do our best to try to help you. You know, we may not have all the answers, but 
Um, we'll find somebody who does have the answers. Yeah, and be that mentor for people because cool. it's it's so lonely when you first start. You just don't even know. Uh, going off what you what you said there, you know, you said that you know these these cam models look up to 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 these these high level girls, and then and then they meet them or get to know them a little better and realize they're awful people. That kind of goes across all industries though, because you know even like. Uh, kids There's who look no. up to kids who look up to baseball players or whatever, and they I want to do this, and then they meet them and they're an asshole. They're like, oh my, it like shatters your world because you you yeah. hold them at such a high level, and then you're like, oh my god, they're awful people. Like this sucks. Is everyone in this industry an awful person? You know what I mean? So I get that. That makes a lot of sense. I remember when I saw the top model that I like was like, she is amazing. Like she's a businesswoman. She's doing the smart. She's putting money away. She's investing in buying houses and all this stuff. Like this is who I want to be like. And then on Twitter, she was like bullying people. And I was like, I don't want to be like her at all. Right, you know, right. like I felt totally deflated that like this person that I thought was wonderful was not at all. Yeah. It was, it sucks. Yeah. You spoke on, there's no real how to guide to become a camera. Model. I feel the same is very true in podcasting. There's a lot of like <laughs> how to how to start a podcast, how to get your yeah. stuff up, get it on Twitter, iTunes, blah blah blah. But one thing I love about podcasting the most is it is a open canvas. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You want to have a sex work podcast? You want to have a podcast about like ours where we talk about weird shit all the time. It's mm -hmm. just finding your niche, you know, but I feel a lot of people just copy each other. You know, there's a million yeah. movie podcasts and music podcasts and whatever, so it's finding your you know, your your place in the industry to, to make it successful. You know, I think you guys have a great spot because how many sex work by sex workers podcasts, you know what I mean? It's great, you know? Yeah, yeah, we are it that, mm -hmm. that we know of, that, we, that we're yeah. aware of, so. So, I mean, that's really awesome. And like us, I mean, we just talk about weird shit, so there ain't no, <laughs> most Basically. people. Do. That's why you invited us on. All right, I see. <laughs> yeah, weird <laughs> shit. You know, but, you weird know, I wanted shit. to start something that, like, the, you know, the part of the world that, you know, weird, weird, unique jobs, weird, unique lifestyle, you know, anything that's yeah. different can get a voice, you know, it's not like you're not because you're an actress in Hollywood or whatever, you know, so, I mean, I just wanted to be able to. This is a no, topic it... that especially resonates with me, too. <laughs> this boy just... is all about porn. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Look, it's all, I just, I just want to make sure that people know that you are human beings. And that, you know, we need to normalize that this is a part of our culture and it needs to be normalized a little bit. So, you know, mm -hmm. you people, you, yeah. Lead, yeah. you lead normal lives. You go to school, you raise your children, you go to PTA mm -hmm. meetings. People need yeah. to know that shit. Yeah. Just, right. You're, you're not like some, some weird person because you do sex work for a living. You know what I mean? You're a normal person mm -hmm. just like us. Instead of going to a, a nine to five, you pick your hour. You're an entrepreneur. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of, I mean, we talk about it a lot on the podcast, like it's, there's a stigma that like we're all broken, that we're all here because we're forced to be or we have to be or, you know, we have daddy issues and that's why we, you know, are like looking up to be accepted by others and and it's totally, I mean, we, we have our issues. I mean, I, I would say we both buy. have daddy issues, but that's yeah. not why. Yeah, that's not <laughs> why I'm a sex <laughs> worker. <laughs> right, right, right. I imagine, you, like you said, your client, your clients come and go. You know, you said, like, if you take a couple weeks off, they'll just mi migrate or whatever. I imagine you have consistency with a few people. Yes. You know, somebody, you know. Now, if you're if you're running like if you know say you have say you have a few guys that are constantly working with whatever and they something happens they fall offline you don't hear from them I mean do you oh. actively search new guys or do you let them come to you or how do you find new clients I mean do you do you, you cry first usually <laughs> oh don't cry on cam you cry well, no, like you have somebody that like come you meet them. And then they come into your life and they drop like three thousand dollars they buy you a ton of gifts and then they're gone like two weeks later they're gone and like i think a lot of girls do? count on that too like they like they um like i have a i have somebody who helps me probably 80 percent of my weekly income but i am totally prepared that at any point he might disappear you know and, and i oh, have so a backup plan like i well, have to, will like, then have to cam more you know mm -hmm. exactly. um but girls put all their eggs in one basket and they're like, oh, I have this dude that gives me $1,000 a week to do this, this, and this, and this. They're like, oh, I'll just keep counting on that as my mm -hmm. income. And then he disappears and they, what do you do? They they don't know what to do to recover that $1,000 a week. Well, right. I went to business school. So, I mean, they teach you, you can't put all your eggs in one basket because if like yeah. more than 50% of your revenue is coming from one source, one day that source may not be there anymore. And then what are you going to do? Right. You know, so mm -hmm. it's. 
So it's, you know, it's, it's great. I mean, but when you, when you realize that your consistency is going down, I guess, from certain people, do you, do you try to find new people to be consistent with, or do you just let it be natural? They want to keep coming back or whatever. I'm not sure how we'd find, you can't really find Find people. And if you're finding somebody, that means you're probably scalping them from somebody else. Like you found their information because they're like, dogging on another girl like they're like all about this other girl and like mm-hmm. you, so you like message Usually, him if you want to find new people you just need to work 10 times harder than you were gotcha. um like if i needed to to get some new regular customers i would be more available yeah i would be on snapchat more doing more takeovers i would be mm-hmm. on um social media time. Social media yeah i would you know i for a while there there was like two months where i would put out 10 new videos a week and, yeah, and i was so, doing like 14 at the time yeah so both, just like, to like try to gain some new video sales and things like that and then you just you keep doing that and eventually you start gaining regulars right. um through right. customer service you know we message everybody that buys a video from us i've been really sucky about it because summer suck but um you know just good mm-hmm. customer service to those people and they keep coming back um and eventually you just you you hope one of them's a whale and that right. you know mm-hmm. now uh you real quick uh, you mentioned snapchat takeovers for the people out there who don't know what that is can you give a quick breakdown of what that means so they understand what you're talking about man i wish this one cam model we knew was here because she's got a real like down pat way to explain it we have like an hour long interview on snapchat do you you, do you work someone else's snapchat account or a snapchat account and a promoter's account yep for 24 hours okay Mm -hmm. and then you just post yourself and talk and pimp and pimp your sites and your all that sort of stuff yeah, exactly. a lot of people will play right. They'll play games, so they'll be like, "Go to this site and buy a balloon," and then inside the balloon will be like, "You win five videos. You win their Snapchat for four months. This and this and that." Okay. So, all right. So that's so like the, the the very bare bones explanation mm-hmm. of what it is. Yeah, so. it's like a cam room on Snapchat almost. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like they'll pay yeah. you to like do spank. They'll pay you to take shots to smoke. They'll pay, you know. I mean, it's it it varies. Uh, Off topic question: Shay, you said you're a gamer. What is your favorite game to play right now? Um, I do a lot of role playing. Um, so I do Grand Theft Auto role playing and Ark role playing is are yep, yeah, are my two big ones right now. Alright. Okay. Just, just yeah. curious. Yeah. Yeah, I was just curious. Do you, Kyra, do you play games at all, either even offline when you're not when you're not uh camming? She has one where with Overwatch where her and another girl oh, that's, control their own. Yeah, that's mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, and we really, yeah, like, we right. played Overwatch and controlled each other's vibrators. See, there's an app on your phone that you can um, control a vibrator that somebody yeah. else has remotely. Oh, um, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and so we did that with each other. Yeah, Overwatch. Fun. I'm a, I've played World of Warcraft for, like, 12 years, so I don't know. Yeah, I'm kind of, kind of new. I like comic books a lot. I like music a lot. I like to read. Who do you, Those who are the things to? that I do. Me? I listen to a little bit of everything. Like, I like a lot of, oh, my gosh, it's really All right, good. I, hop, I, don't I, like your, con- yeah. I don't like country, and I don't like R&B. Because when I hear country, I'm sad, and when I hear R&B, it reminds me of, like, some 90s movies where they're, like, getting down. And I you know you. what I mean? Yeah, so it, I'm like, like, like the boys in the hood sex scene exactly, when they play like the R&B. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I got you. So we did this this question on our Get to Know the Host episode. Top three CDs that you can listen to from front to back without stopping of all time. Oh, my gosh. I'm not a huge music. I listen to music, but I don't ever feel that passionate about any any music. It's really weird. I If we hop into your Prius and we turn the key, turn up the radio, what are we going to hear, Shay? Probably something that my children have put on. It's really sad. So like, like the Wiggles, Raffy? Oh, no. Wiggles. No. That's, no, they're teenagers, so, you know, the the top the top 40 is Will big. Lil Uzi um, Yeah. I have to really, like, check myself sometimes. My son will put on music, and I'm like, you can't twerk to that in front of him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> it's like this instant reaction. Some songs, you know, they just you have to twerk to them, or I have twerked to them, and they made me good money. Right, <laughs> right, like, right. That's what you have to think about constantly. That's what you yeah. think about when you hear it. Right, yeah, right. Kyra, what about you? What, 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 what do you listen to? What do you? What are your CDs? You got a top three, a favorite um, song? I artist? have a thumb print. So, like, um, I really like this band called Borns. 
they sing the song Electric Love, which I'm sure you guys have heard. It was on, like, like the pop stations and stuff. I like a band called um, Steely Dan. Oh, Steely is, Dan. Wow. Old, old school. school. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then it's hard for me to pick just a couple. I like Morphine a lot. Morphine. What is your, like, favorite CD of all time? Like, your whole, <laughs> the whole, the drug morphine. Like, if you had to pick a CD, <laughs> do you have any favorite CD, like, a, of a whole CD that you used to listen that to? That I could just listen to the whole time? Yep. Yes, Roundabout. Roundabout. No. Is that the band or is that the CD? Yes is the band. The, yes, Roundabout the band. is the CD. Oh, yes. Like, the 70s rock band, yes? <laughs> yeah. Look at you. Like, yeah, going old school. <laughs> Yeah, I remember, like, uh, Yes, Fragile, I think, is one of their CDs they have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. TNT's like, I got <laughs> I like no Justin idea. a lot. I like no Pink idea. Floyd. See, like, 80s rock. 80s, 70s rock stuff. I Old also school. like 90s. Like, I like Alice in Chains a lot. I like, um... Three-legged dog. Yeah, the three-legged See, dog. I like, um, Sublime... Yeah, okay. Slime's good. Cottonmouth Kings, like oh, you have very boy. wide musical taste. I, I love music. I see, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very widespread too. My, my, uh, my, my mom used to work at a music store when I was a kid, so I've heard, mm-hmm. I go from, yeah. you know, rap to R and B to rock to whatever I like. You know, if I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't. <clears throat> Another random question. I don't know if you listen to or get to know the host show, but or wait, maybe this was even on there. If you guys could put two animals together and make a new animal with logistics not being a problem, like, so, like, what animal would you make? <laughs> yeah, I'll these tell, are the we'll, hard-hitting we'll, questions. We'll, we'll, we'll tell I you know, ours first. serious shit right here. We'll, we'll tell you okay. ours first, so that way okay. you guys have time to think. TNT, why don't you tell them the super imaginative one you came up with? Are you talking about my my dragon? Would he, he goes, I'll create a dragon. I'm like, that's a, is there that's mythical a, creatures? No, are we See, that's no. What I, was, so, I was confused. I wouldn't no. put a lizard and and the dragon, the dog dragon from the never ending story. <laughs> I did. I, I did. I a, my first one was a horse and a che- a horse and a cheetah. Could have some what crazy horse cheetah monster? What we call it a heeta or a chorse? And then uh, a, mos- a mosquito and an alligator. So you could have like a, a mosquito with like an alligator head and the mosquito like blood sucker. That sounds awful. <laughs> that awful. Are we supposed to pick like what we want? Is it supposed to have a good resolution or is it supposed to be something awful? Like Any, am I supposed anything to you want, anything you want, just mix something together. Something you think would be it's cool to see. To your twisted I'm, imagination. I for some have always been really obsessed with monkeys. I don't okay. know why and kangaroos. So I don't know how the logistics Whoa, of that all would oh, work that would together. Awesome. That is fucking but, like, but what kind of monkey? Like a chimpanzee or like a baboon or like a gorilla? A uh, small monkey. So like a, a like spider a, monkey and a, <laughs> and a kangaroo? Yeah, like the ones that you see at the zoo and they're like flipping around from tree to tree, you know? I don't know yeah, how that... <laughs> kangaroo legs? Yeah. When I When I pressured TNT, he came up with a really good one. He said he wanted to mix gorillas and monarch butterflies, so you'd have gorillas with monarch butterfly wings flying oh around. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That'd be cool. Right? Really I like fun. that one. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. See, the right. only thing I keep saying in my head is a rhino and an otter. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's, that and I'm like... Robert? A rotter. Like, they're a raw, ro- yeah, a rotter. It's okay. I really like rhinos. They're like the yeah. firefighters of the jungle. Like if they see a fire, they'll run and stomp it out. And I so, like otters because they're fu- yeah. So do you and want I, like, a a and rhino? I want elephants, but rhino. I know rhino and elephants are too close. I don't know. A rhino so with be, an otter tail. Yeah, would it be a rhino with an otter tail <laughs> yeah. or like a otter body with a rhino head and a tail? Like how would you so do it? Because I like the noises otters make. So it's really hard for me. So, so like can they have rhino okay? With so it's a otter rhino head, head and okay. an otter body with okay. the otter voice box. Oh, oh there we go. What about proportions? What are we talking rhino proportions? <laughs> are we the, talking otter proportions? The otter, the otter is the size of the rhino. It's a huge oh, ass otter. Oh my god! Oh. A big, so it's like it's, a bear. yeah, yeah, it's like a bear. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit! Oh my god! All right, one the more. It can make. One more random question: If you could take any animal and shrink it down to the size of a cat as a pet, what animal would it be? An elephant. An elephant. I actually picked rhino. Was mine like a little yeah. rhino running around the house? Like that would be awesome. Danger! Itself. Danger! I picked the deer because I would like to have like a little, like a little mini deer. Audrey Hepburn, the actress, actually owned a deer as a pet. 
Yeah. I saw one, I saw one on a camping trip. It jumped out of somebody's motor home. It was their their pet. It was What's their the motor deer? home. The deer were staying there. They were right, also right. camping. <laughs> like a fire. Fire. I had a I had a friend in Ohio. Her dad raised and breeded reindeer and sold them. He had a whole farm. Like he had like thirty reindeer on that his property. Like a real Ohio thing to do. Whoa. Hey, don't hey, don't judge Midwest happenings. Okay, come on. <laughs> I know. I'm like seriously. <laughs> I mean, anybody I know, like France, are coming to life. Anybody I've ever met that lives in Ohio has told me how awful of a place it is. See, I <laughs> loved Ohio. I, I mean, I live in Texas like, now, but I love I loved Ohio. There wasn't a lot to do, but it was it was pretty good place for me. We lived up near Cleveland though, so. That's where we grew up. So. Yeah, my, we weren't no, so rural. Like, yeah. No. Rural. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? What? There wasn't so a what lot I, to do in Cleveland. What? No, there's not. There's more now. But what about you, Shay? What animal would you shrink down for a pet? Oh my gosh. I don't know. I've just always. I'm literally so obsessed with monkeys. I. So, I like. I, it would be a gorilla. It would have okay. to be a mini gorilla. I really want a dragon, but I feel like that's not an animal. I know. Octopus. I, I don't know if you guys watch Game of Thrones, but, like, I'm so obsessed with Khaleesi and her no dragon. No spoilers. I know. I haven't seen the last two episodes, so shush. Um, I watch Game of Thrones. Yeah, I... I, I don't really, watch it either. I want to be Khaleesi. I think since everybody else watches yeah. it, I'm kind of like... Eh. Yeah, me too. I kind of am like, eh, whatever. Yeah. Yep. It's... Yep. So, so you want a gorilla dragon? A gorilla dragon, yeah. There we go. A gorilla a dragon one. wings? A dragon wings? Well, the honestly, Dracula. if you think of a gorilla dragon, so it's a gorilla with dragon wings, is actually the adult version of TNT's gorilla with monarch butterfly oh, wings. When the yeah. it's born, it's a gorilla with monarch butterfly wings, and then as it gets older, it grows dragon wings. And then it breathes yeah, fire like... and shit, too. Oh, my God, that's amazing. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. I, like, I like where you guys take that. Oh. <laughs> you guys believe in ghosts? Have you had any paranormal activity happen? I am your- literally the biggest scaredy cat in the whole entire world. <laughs> but I don't know. I haven't given a lot I'm of afraid of the dark. I'm legit. So can I be honest? If I'm in the dark and I'm like feel scared, and this is gonna like what a loser. Since I was younger, <laughs> I literally sing a song, and all this song is is I go Jesus, Jesus, Jesus <laughs> as I'm running in the dark. Until I get uh, to the light. So you yell Jesus until you get to the light? Yeah. That's kind of like a, is that a metaphor for, like, life? Like, the life cycle, <laughs> you're coming from the dark to the light, saving it, and Jesus is... Maybe. <laughs> what, what I'm doing it, like, if I say it, I'm like, I... And this I, is the girl that always tells me I'm not religious. I'm not religious. <laughs> I, I'm not religious. I'm, I don't have a religion, but I do believe in God. I'm spiritual, and I think what I believe is totally different than what everybody else believes, but your walk is your walk, and mine is mine. You do you. Right. But you know what? That song has kept you safe forever. Then I know. <laughs> I have not eaten by a monster. <laughs> you never had, like, a, a, a painting fall off the wall or doors that flush in toilets, doors that close or open? Did you say a door that flushed the toilet? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that would really freak me the fuck out. <laughs> yes. Then I would believe in ghosts. I oh, sure. wow. What about aliens? Either you've been abducted? I haven't been abducted, but I do think aliens are real. Oh, okay. Man, Has anyone ever told, told you somebody. ghost stories that you know, like friends, family, anything told you a ghost story about they lived in a house that was had like weird shit going on or Nope. No, nope. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, me neither. I really I thought, thought this would be a bigger segment. I'm more uh, I'm more agnostic about it. Like if I had solid proof, I would believe, but I don't that's, not believe. You know. Yeah, yeah, that's me. I'm very like if I, I have to like have some sort of like tangible evidence or like I, I have to have something to be able to like grasp my hands on to like. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm not a big speculator about anything, and I'm more of like a fact kind of person. Like you show me a fact, I'll believe it, but I'm not going to yeah. believe like what a myth, you know, so to speak. So. And I, uh, I, I have, like, recollection of, like, night paralysis mixed with, like, bad dreams and shit like that, but I can't really think anything. I did a lot of drugs during my, during my younger years, so that might have something to do with it. <laughs> I think it's a I'll have to search dream. my memory bank to see if I have something. Yeah, something going on. Kyra so. does have alien porn. I do. How's that work exactly? Yeah, how, yeah. How, I made it, it. I was the alien. Thing? I got, like, Galera context so my eyes were all black and i was an alien queen and then like i made them 
fuck me, I abducted the human, and I needed his seed so I could um, <laughs> produce a large brood of That's new awesome. aliens. So. Hey. Was this a request or something you thought of? It was a custom. Oh, that's awesome. Man, that it was awesome. a lot of fun, and I take my shit really serious. So, oh, like, I bought, and like, I, I know about the whole process as she's, like, preparing <laughs> for it. I get a play-by-play. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You have to do any adjustments to the Orify in order to... My Orify? <laughs> yeah, for the <laughs> <laughs> if, 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 like, any... Makeup or costume No, I didn't do anything like that, but the way I filmed, I filmed it with, I got, like, this silver um, backdrop, and then I put a purple light in, so my skin automatically looked a different color. Okay. That, that's so creative. Look at you. Like, you should, like, should get into, like, set production and shit, you know, just trying to... I, like I said, I wouldn't hate being a producer. That'd be awesome. Yeah, you should get in a job where you just help girls make custom videos, and you can, like, set up the sets and all that shit whenever you get tired of making them yourself. Then they can okay. pay you to do their set design. That'd be a good idea. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're like, I'm down. <laughs> so, but you guys always ask everyone what the highlight of their, you know, career is. So I was wondering what the highlight of your, what highlight, and, it, and even if you have, if you have a low light you want to throw in there too, we can get the, be- the both ends of the spectrum. I, I don't, wouldn't say it was like a highlight, but I, I mean, I remember going to AVN last year. Um, oh, that's the adult. Awesome the adult um, video network awards. We didn't actually go to the awards, but there's a conference. That's like right. the whole week. And I remember landing in Vegas and just being like, I'm a sex worker. I'm, I can be a sex worker. I'm Shay. I can tell everybody I'm a sex worker. And everybody was really, really accepting. I met some really, really awesome girls. Um, the whole experience was really like freeing, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. And so it, it really... Like, I'm really looking forward to going again this year. Um, Kyra's going to be with me again this year, and we're going for the podcast. We're not going for ourselves. We're going for the podcast this year, so that should be fun. But just just be that, like, free feeling of being able to, to – I mean, you're, you're surrounded by 10,000 sex workers, and everybody's just so open and honest about it, and everybody's, like, half naked and filming porn and, you know, masturbating in weird places and – yeah, you need to be at AVN. Well, uh, I imagine it felt great because, you, like you said, you're so reserved and hidden most of the time. It was like the one time you – it just didn't matter. You could just – it is what it is. I'm as open and free as I want to be, and everyone else is like awesome, you know? Yeah, 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 and everybody was like, whatever, I am too, you know? So mm-hmm. I remember the the um, the um taxi driver was like – or our Uber or whatever was like – yeah, like, what is it all about? Tell me. And, you know, you, and you still want to kind of be cautious because you're like, okay, like, I can't tell these people too much information, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, you're like, just totally open about being a sex worker and, and proud of it. You know, it's, it's, it was a cool feeling. That's sweet. What about you, Kyra? Meeting me. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> but I've known her for a long time, so I'm over it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's hard because, like, I want to say, like, the highlight was um, something monetary, but, like, I've had so many good things happen to me. I feel like I've met a lot of really great people, and, like, I'm getting ready to go to my first convention in November, <laughs> and so I'm super stoked about going to this convention. I've never been on a plane before. I've only left my state once, and so, like, I'm pretty nervous, but I think that that's going to be a huge experience for me. I'll get to meet Shay in person, and we'll get mm-hmm. to kind of – have a good time, I assume. The um, process of getting her on the plane so far has been interesting, and she's not even <laughs> there yet. <laughs> yeah. 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 How, how, many months, how many months away is this? It's no, in early November. Oh, so just so here, yeah, so not too long. Oh, man, yeah. so now you have only a few weeks to, to uh, think about it and <laughs> dwell on it. And all well, that and shit. the thing is, too, is, like, we already paid for housing, so it's not like I can, like, back out and I'm getting ready to buy my plane ticket so it's like at this point they're staying in a house with 10 other girls yeah so oh wow be that'll be awesome well we're yeah. going for the podcast this time too because we figured like <laughs> it would be silly to go to this event and for us to film content because like for me my girl girl stuff does not sell very well like mm-hmm. that's not what my clientele wants to see me do they don't really like seeing me do the girl girl stuff 
And so it's like, it seems silly to do that. And so why not go to the convention and have stickers and have pins and have like a mic hooked up to our phone so we can do live interviews. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. And, like, Cause that's our demographic. Like people want to know about themselves and like they get to hear things and it's nice to be able to listen to something and be able to relate to it. I was going to say, and you also can get your podcast out to other adult industry people that aren't cam models. You know what exactly. I mean? So it's, yeah. you know, you know, porn stars or whatever else, you know, that may, who, who they have no idea it's out there. They're like, Oh shit. All right. I'll go on their podcast and talk about the adult film, film industry or whatever, yeah. you know? Yeah. And we've had really good luck, like getting guests. We haven't had a hard, we haven't had much difficulty getting people to come on, but we definitely are like in with the cam, like mm-hmm. the industry we we talk about on our podcast. The umbrella of po- of sex work is so big now that you know we definitely are in like the cam girl part of it. And so getting guests that are outside of cam girls has been a little more difficult because they don't know us and they're not trusting Mm -hmm. of us per se. Or so we get a lot of cam models that listen, but not so much the other aspects of sex work. So producing and and it's so big. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I think that, I mean, I think that could be a really big, good thing for you guys. I mean, just the exposure. I mean, Mm -hmm. that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We're hoping so. But I don't really have a low either. I guess uh, last July I had a cyst and I couldn't work for like six weeks because I had to have surgery and stuff. Mm. And so like it was like I wasn't making any money, but l- I literally couldn't do anything about it. Right. So right. that kind of blew. Yeah, but yeah. so let me we ask deal- you a random question: What do cam girls do when it's like that time of the month? Do you just not work that 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 week or what? Like, or do you I have work literally around had it or? I have endometriosis, and I've had one period this whole entire year, and it was, like, three days long. So, for me, it doesn't matter. But my advice to girls that do get their periods is do um, spank shows, do tit shows, do blowjob shows. High tachi shows where there's exactly. no insertion. Um, a lot of girls use like um, soft cups. I think they are. Or you um, can take um, sea yeah. foam sponges. Yeah. And wet them down a little bit, and you can shove them upside. You. That's a porn tray secret. No there you go. Awesome. Yeah. I was just. I was. Just, I mean, you know. I mean, it's something that monthly is for a extended period of time, and you work. If you know, some of those girls work consistently daily, all hours and hour. You know, what I mean, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had a. I had a. I had a hysterectomy 11 years ago, so I don't, like, I don't, like, I forget. You don't have that problem either. I forget it happens. (laughs) Yeah. Right, right, right. So luckily for you guys, you really don't have that issue because both of you don't really have periods. Yeah, it is an issue for girls that do, so. Yeah. So sorry that happens to you, ladies. Yeah. Yeah, right. Sorry about your luck. But I can never have another kid, so there's that, and you can, so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You take the good with the bad, right? Right. You know, it's. Now, do you have. If, if if there happens to be any person listening right now that wants to get into this industry, what is any sort of advice you would give them? How to get in, what they should do, anything. Go to sexyworkbb.com and listen to our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You'll learn a lot there. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Just go listen to our podcast. In my head, I was like, we talk about stuff. If you want to yeah. do it, do research before you start. and decide to invest in a good camera invest in a good camera and good lighting when you start because that's really important okay do you guys have like a light setup for when you do shows and stuff i mean that's like an external like movie set type light setup sort of deal yeah Mm -hmm. a lot of us use ring lights or i have a box light okay so so basically if you want to start camming get make sure you get some sort of like professional lighting equipment to help you out so you aren't in the dark or whatever yeah well, and be mentally prepared, too, that this job is not easy. It sounds easy because you're, like, quick money. It's not quick money. It's going to take a long time. you got to be consistent. And you have to realize, like, I've been sna- – I don't Snapchat a lot on the weekends because my kids are home from school. But, like, I have to Snapchat, and I have to, like, talk to people constantly. I have to be on social media constantly. I need to be promoting my videos. I need to be uploading to sites to make sure my videos stay at the top, like – it's you never really get to step away from it. Mm-hmm. Um, and also be prepared uh, for the stigmas that go with it. N- know what you're getting into. Um, a lot of girls, like, people will record our shows and then upload them on the Internet, and the girls are like, 
one of my shows are recorded and I, I'm on the internet now naked and I, I didn't know that was going to happen. And it, it, yeah, you're out there and you're going to be out there and it, it could be there for a really long time. Um, and there's girls who have lost custody of their children. There's girls who have not been able to get jobs. There's girls who, I mean, there's a lot of negativity that goes around it that you are putting yourself at the risk to. Um, mm-hmm. So just be aware that that is real and can happen so that if it does happen to you, you're not like, I mean, I remember when my video got put up on Pornhub, I had no clue. And I was like, uh, what, now what, <laughs> you know, like you're, you're in shock. Um, mm-hmm. so, so know the risk you're taking. You might not ever be able to get a job doing, you know, some things because. Teaching. Right. You know, people, and one of the things is doing this, people, some people will assume that like you're some sort of sexual deviant because you do this stuff. And so yeah, they just assume be the worst of you. Yeah. Right. So have your mental preparedness as much as your, your, you know, your, your physical Equipment. and hardware and all that stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And have a thick skin. I mean, we deal with a lot of really great people, but we deal with a lot of really, really crappy people too. Right, so, right. um, yeah, yeah and, you t- and you touched on, Amy, you're doing it all the time. And I think that's true with any entertainment sort of thing. Like, even, like, with this podcast, I mean, I'm constantly on Twitter replying to people that reply to me. If you, if you don't do that, if you don't engage, people don't know. I mean, you have to push yourself out. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. You know, especially when yeah. you first start and no one knows who the hell you are. Why are they going to listen to you or watch your show if they have no idea who the hell you are? You know, right. so. Well, I think her and I were fortunate because we had already been – like combined when we started doing it, we had like eleven thousand followers from our personal like sex mm. work accounts. And so we made the podcast and we're like, Hey, we're doing this podcast. Come follow us. Come uh-huh. listen. So without that I It was it easier was, for us probably to start the podcast than it was for you guys where Oh yeah, yeah. I had yeah, I had, I, did, I had no prior experience, I had no hookups, I had no whatever. I mean I built I did everything from the ground up, man. I just put in a bunch of damn networking and I'm constantly constantly reaching out to people about uh-huh. being on the show you know you have to or people are uh-huh. going to forget who you are so yep. yeah yeah yep. yeah you become a marketer and a I mean, we, we're, that's why when people ask what we do, we're like, well, we're a marketer, graphic designer, cam girl. Like, I mean, <laughs> what do you want us to be? We, we pretty much do it. So, mm-hmm. right. And people don't think about that. Even for, you know, for you guys, they don't want to think about, you need someone to put together your site and do your graphics, do your videos. Yeah. If you don't know how to do it or aren't willing to learn, that's a lot of money you got to shell out or find other people to do well, it for free. Well, and who are you going to find to do it for you? Right. Right. I mean, people uh, aren't, like, inclined to be like, oh, I'll make some graphics for your store. Like, there are models that pay people. Like, they've done it because there's no niche for it. Right. So. All right. Absolutely. TNT, you got anything else? Uh, you got anything else on your on your questions? No, oh, man. I'm good. I'm just All enjoying. Right. He got his fort. <laughs> he got his joke in, so he's not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's been playing that shit. shit. Four right, weeks I've been too. holding that, he said. <laughs> I know. Seriously. Oh, so. No, but for, guys, I, I mean, I had a blast. I, I really thank you guys for coming on. Yeah, me too. Um, thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah do you so. guys want to tell everyone where to find you on uh, your your podcast, where you guys can cam, your Twitter, anything you want to give, just let everybody know so they can find you. Yeah. Well, let me get a pen and paper, though. Uh-oh. <laughs> Well, no, I don't. I think that her and I both on this level, we don't really use the podcast to promote our own personal like videos and clip making that we don't do it for that we do it for the podcast like we're really right. passionate about this but and since he shouted out your videos there's probably a bunch of people curious where to get your videos go to kyravids.com <laughs> kyravids.com and then how do they follow you on twitter for the podcast or your personal or whatever my personal is at kyra k-y-r-a kane k-a-n-e m-f-c that's my uh personal and then Shay's is, you want to do it or you want me to do it? Go for it. At Shay, S-H-A-Y-E underscore Taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-R, three mm-hmm. on Twitter. And yep. then our sex work BB is at sex work BB. And it's pretty easy. You can find Just it. Just the letter B B. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, well, uh, I just want to thank you guys so much for uh, for doing the interview, and then we'll be right back. The Crazy Town Podcast. TNT Dynamite. Huh. I enjoyed that interview so much.
Yeah, man, they were great. Yeah, they were really awesome. I don't. I mean, I have no idea what Shay Taylor's up to now. I mean, she she's left the Sex Work BB podcast, but Kyra Kane is doing an amazing job on her own. Yeah, yeah. So make sure you guys check out their podcast. It is great. Well, Kyra's podcast. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, and, you know, of course, follow us on Twitch. Again, at – I mean, sorry, not at. It's twitch.tv slash crazytownmedia. Also, YouTube channel, Crazy Town Media. Subscribe to that shit. <laughs> Get on there and subscribe and to that shit. the Twitter, at Crazy Town Media. Do you see a trend here? Crazy Town Media is taking over the globe, TNT. <laughs> We're no longer just a Crazy Town podcast. Nope. We're branching out. We're, we, we are. We are. We're Crazy Town a, movie 2020. Turn, 20, yeah, right, turn to a little enterprise. So, all right, everybody. Uh, we'll be back with uh, another interview episode of Dr. Raymond Youngblood Jr., the international gold miner. So, look forward to that. And for Jonas, for TNT Dynamite, we are out.